Eller hur? Precis. <laughs> yeah, so what's all that about? Uh, well, yeah, I'm still in the process of, of building the inflatable car. I just thought that I would take a short break and capture some uh, flight action again with the multi-rotor. And this time, as I have been speaking about earlier, uh, I intended to uh, fly over water. So I, I went ahead and uh, built the transportation rig for my uh, trailer. Unfortunately, I did not check out the conditions uh, at the lake or the pond that I intended to fly over. Uh, usually it looks, looks like this. But the day before the intended flight, I just thought that I would go to the pond just to check out the environment to see that everything is all right. Uh, I discovered that it's not all right at all because they have drained the pond. So suddenly I'm stuck with the multi-rotor parts in, in my entire uh, workshop. Uh, so it was very difficult to uh, make any progress with the inflatable car project. And I was not really happy with just uh, driving back to my, to my playground with the, all the multi-rotor parts. Uh, so I was searching for an alternative uh, flight location. And I actually did find a beautiful spot to fly on. Uh, and it's uh, located out on an island. But things are never easy. Uh, and in this case there is a road barrier uh, just on the... Um, on the uh, entrance to the bridge over to the island. And road barriers, oh my god, they really piss me off. And uh, I'm a creative guy, so I thought that I can, I can uh, work my way around this road barrier, of course, uh, without, I mean, just chopping it up and th throwing it in the lake. Um, so this is my solution to that. And you just might wonder why I just don't fly to the, <laughs> to the flight location uh, and, and uh, back. But the reason for that is of course endurance. Uh, the battery pack I'm using right now in the multi-rotor would be enough to go to the flight site and back. It's about 5 kilometers. Uh, but I would not be able to spend a lot of time flying around over the water and that was the intention of this flight. Uh, so that's the reason for me wanting to transport the, uh, the multi-rotor all the way to the actual flight site. In the uh, first episode of the inflatable vehicle, I showed you how, how I uh, utilized the uh, PWM circuitry in an ordinary battery-powered uh, uh, tool to control the power of uh, corded electric power tools. Uh, that are typically uh, serious uh, wound motors. Uh, and I thought that I would take the opportunity to try that technology um, full out this time uh, before I actually use it again in the inflatable vehicle project. So this is a, like a perfect uh, uh, situation to, to really try that hack uh, full out. So that's what I did. So I, I bought uh, four uh, powerful electric uh, corded electric grills. I think there are uh, around one horsepower each. And here I will just show you the uh, overall mechanical uh, layout of this uh, utility vehicle. And in this photo you can see the three 
uh, high voltage transistors, uh, which at their gate leg uh, receives the PWM signal from the uh, battery powered tool. And you can also see that each gate leg has a uh, 100 ohm resistor pulling it down to zero volts in between each uh, pulse uh, created by the PWM circuitry in the uh, battery powered tool. Each array of uh, three transistors are mounted on a cooling plate, which in turn is mounted in the airstream uh, coming out from the uh, machine that they are controlling. Each uh, array of uh, transistors ends up in a uh, socket, uh, which connects to the uh, drill's original uh, plug. Uh, and hidden out of sight is a diode that is placed in the socket that uh, kills the um, inductive spiking that comes out of the electric motors, which would otherwise uh, uh, destroy your uh, transistors. Now let's take a, a closer look at the, uh, the actual finished um, uh, version of this vehicle. I, I will uh, show you the features of it. Here it is, purely functional. It's not a thing of beauty exactly, but uh, I kind of like the approach that it's just 100% function. And so there's a lot of strong points and uh, other things uh, attached to it. It has a very uh, low profile so that you can go under pretty much uh, any road barrier, I suppose. Uh, it's uh, one motor uh, in each corner driving one wheel. The motors are geared down to around uh, 1000 RPM, which uh, gives a top speed of around 35 kilometers an hour or so. It's kind of the on the high side, but it's, uh, it's very fun. Uh, it would be more practical to have it lower geared, but this was the, uh, the lowest geared motors I can find in this uh, price range. They are around 1000 watt in power uh, so I think they're around 700 watts out or one horsepower out or so. Um, you can see I use the, the stock uh, connectors on the machines. I really should shorten the, the uh, cord there, but I haven't done that yet. Uh, I started out without using these relays. Uh, these uh, make it possible to run the motors in the opposite direction via the, the uh, remote controller here. Um, but. Uh, it gets much more manu maneuverable if you can uh, run it like a tank. And in the middle you have the one kilowatt hour battery pack. It's good for around uh, 10 kilometers range or so. Uh, 16 four cell batteries connected in series. Gives a <laughs> quite high uh, fresh of the charger voltage. And I'm using uh, stock connectors here to keep the high voltage safe, or as safe as it could be. Um, and uh, each machine, each each uh, screwdriver here is se secured with a, a metal plate here to take out the uh, take the uh, torque force, and it's held in the front in this clamp, which uh, goes down under the vehicle, uh, attached to a metal plate under each one of these. Uh, I have this uh, styrofoam and packing tape uh, system to keep the dirt out of the, uh, the vehicle and it actually works quite well. And you can see the, uh, the cooling thing with the transistors and, and resistors and they are in the path of the cooling air coming out from each uh, machine. Uh, I have not detected any elevated temperature at all almost after significant length of drive. And uh, here you can see the, uh, the attachment point for the aluminum rod that uh, will keep the uh, each uh, propulsion ring of the motor rotor uh, up in the air whilst the motor rotor sits on top. And here's the cover where with, uh, I think you can see several dents or holes where the motor rotor is supposed to rest in. I've also uh, mounted two skateboard trucks uh, on the side because sometimes you need to get past really narrow places so it's uh, good to be able to put it on the on the side and uh, roll it. Might seem a little bit ridiculous to have <laughs> these holes 
drill out of, of the wood here, but I actually saved like three kilos uh, of weight doing that and it's still a very strong structure so I think it was pretty well invested. Uh, and it's netting that covers these holes so that you don't get a lot of debris inside the, uh, the structure itself. And uh, these are just uh, emptied food canisters that are screwed in the bottom here to, uh, to uh, make it possible to bring various stuff like batteries and you know all things you need to uh, take with on a excursion. I'm charging the battery packs via the uh, balancing leads uh, via this connector here. So it's uh, the same type of uh, charging that I use in the multi-rotor. So I use the same charger array. You do need to uh, decouple the uh, Sirius uh, connection here so that each cell is on its own, otherwise you will uh, burn the charger. And also I have an extra socket here connected directly to, um, to the battery bank so that I can hook up a, uh, some auxiliary uh, equipment like an angle grinder or drill or uh, some sort of machine that you might uh, want to have uh, on the place that you are at. I have um, marked out positive and negative just because uh, in the case I would uh, connect some uh, large LED panel which is uh, sensitive to polarity for the angle grinder or other machinery it doesn't matter. Okay, let's uh, let's move on to uh, to how I control this uh, contraption when I'm driving it. Uh, as always, I found it very useful to build a scale model of uh, of, the, of whatever I'm doing, uh, and uh, this is not an exception. So I build this little car here, and I have two switches which control uh, one side of the uh, vehicle each. So I can I can run one side of the wheels, and then I can run the other side. Uh, and it turns out that if you have uh, good friction, uh, the differential steering force is very small. Uh, if you're going on a softer material with a lot of rolling resistance, it works fairly well. Uh, I could do like perhaps 10 meter diameter turn uh, on a soft uh, grass lawn, uh, but uh, running down the, uh, the uh, asphalt, the tarmac, uh, uh, on my street, I uh, could barely uh, keep up, keep the course uh, correct in correlation to the slight uh, curvature uh, of the street. So that was kind of uh, not not that satisfying. Uh, on gravel road, it's uh, actually enough to follow a normal uh, road, uh, but but sometimes you really do need to maneuver at a um, tighter location that, uh, than than uh, a big grass lawn. So uh, I experimented with uh, various uh, ways of getting more control over the vehicle. And, and one obvious <laughs> way is to uh, turn your motor slightly so that uh, if you power one side, it's uh, going to force the vehicle in a pretty steep turn and, and the opposite as well. Uh, and uh, when I tried this on the model scale, it, it seemed pretty promising. I can run this around uh, tables indoor, uh, but it's kind of bouncy <laughs> sideways because it's four wheel and, and depending on exact the, uh, the, the surface underneath you, one wheel will probably be in the air. So depending on which uh, wheel pair happens to have best traction, it would jump in that direction. So when you're driving it forward, you'll experience a lot of sideways uh, jiggling. And I actually tested this in the full scale version as well and it was very uncomfortable and um, unsettling way of, <laughs> of uh, traveling, especially when you're going at higher speeds. It, it got kind of scary and, and not at all practical. So I, I altered the, uh, the structure back to having the wheels just set uh, parallel uh, and uh, pointing forward. <laughs> um, uh, another obvious way would be to simply uh, get rid of two motors here and uh, put uh, swirling wheels in the back and that will surely give you uh, good control only by powering uh, the wheels uh, individually uh, but I, I thought I think I really need the four horsepower setup uh, here to uh, to haul around my like 300 kilo setup uh, two persons and the uh, the multi-rotor uh, so uh, I made the, uh, the cumbersome thing to uh, rearrange the uh, the uh, electric uh, connections inside the motor so that I can change the polarity of the brushes 
uh, go into the rotor uh, uh, and keep the uh, electric uh, current uh, path the same in the uh, stator. And that works well. Uh, however, you cannot turn on and off the uh, 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 the uh, you cannot switch from forward to backwards while while you're going in one direction. It's like putting in the reverse gear when you're going down the highway in a car. You will uh, wreck the uh, the uh, the uh, electronics uh, and the relays uh, in this case. So you have to be careful when you uh, switch on the uh, the reverse. But otherwise, it it functions well. Let let's take a look. So here it is, uh, two modified uh, battery-powered drills. Uh, I've taken out, take, taken out the motors and the gearbox and replaced it with the just uh, 3D printed caps. Uh, the, it's one main switch here, that which uh, turns on a contactor here to simply connect the battery, the main battery, to the electric system of the vehicle. It's a fail-safe, so if you drop it, uh, it just connects, disconnects the battery. Um, and uh, so as, as soon as you grab your controller, it will be uh, uh, connected. And then you have the uh, right trigger. If you want to go to the right, you, pu you pull the right trigger and the left pair of wheels will start turning like this. And if you want to go to the left, you pull the left trigger and the right wheels will start turning. And of course, if you want to go forward, you pull both triggers. Uh, if you want to steer on the spot, to turn on the spot, say that you want to turn to the, to the right, you simply pull uh, the, uh, the, re the red button on the right side and the uh, right trigger, and then you start turning the left wheels and the uh, right wheels go backwards. So this way you can, you can turn on the spot. And the same uh, for left, of course. And if you want to go full backwards, of course, you pull both reverse switches and, uh, and pull the uh, triggers. Uh, so that's pretty much it. Uh, these batteries drive the gates of all transistors and uh, the way it's hooked up and with a 100 ohm resistor on each um, uh, transistor, it, they're good for around uh, one hour of use, which is probably about what you would uh, need with a one kilowatt uh, hour of uh, battery pack. And now it's finally time to, to have a look at the uh, the first uh, fairly uh, successful test drive. The, uh, the lawn was almost frozen. It was like frost in the grass, but it's still hard and muddy. It's, it's a really difficult uh, surface to drive on and it shows, but let's have a look. And now let's just uh, jump past that road barrier and make a test trip. I don't know why I'm so overly optimistic when it comes to how much time a project will take because I thought that I would have this sorted out in like a week or two and uh, I would be able to, to do my flight at the site uh, before the winter had arrived but of course I did not so it's uh, like ice on the lake now. But anyway I wanted to uh, do the full test cycle with the uh, with the uh, utility device here. And uh, so I went with a friend uh, back and forth the, um, the five kilometers just to, to try out the, uh, the gear. And it, it looks very promising.
so that was a, a great time. But uh, now uh, that when I know that the system overall it works, uh, I just wanted to shake out the um, the weakness of the structure. So so uh, so we went for a little more rough ride just to to uh, see if we could break anything, <laughs> and we could. But let's uh, have a look. The uh, the uh, electric drills, the uh, the powerful electric drills uh, in the system here, uh, as most uh, drills, I think, quarter drills has uh, the the chuck is uh, uh, what do you call it? It's tapered. It's um, uh, it's threaded onto the uh, sh output shaft of the uh, from the gearbox uh, on the drill with a uh, half inch um, fine. A thread, I think it is. So um, uh, I simply uh, threaded the uh, drive shaft of each wheel with uh, that half inch uh, thread uh, and uh, secured it with. Um, uh, it's not lock tight, but it's uh, it's it, well, th thread lock. Uh, and I thought that that ja actually just might hold because thread lock is really a strong uh, bond. Uh, and um, and the uh, wheels turning like what is it? Is it a uh, uh, anti-clockwise? They are also secured with a uh, uh, screw for taking out taking up the uh, the forces when the machine is going backwards. Uh, but when we're hitting the thr throttle full on and we're just spinning around and having fun, uh, we managed to um, to actually just uh, rip that uh, screw in two pieces. Uh. And the um, wheel started to uh, unthread from the uh, drive uh, fr from the uh, motor shaft. Uh, so the gear was uh, the wheel was pushed out against the uh, the sur surface of the <laughs> of the structure, so it locked. Uh, so now I have um, secured every wheel with uh, uh, by welding it to the uh, to the actual output shaft of each uh, uh, drill. <laughs> Power drill. So it's uh, now it's uh, super secu securely locked. Uh, each wheel in each drive system is locked onto the actual motor. Uh, so I feel pretty secure, secure that it will not uh, come loose again. Uh, so I think we have hammered out the um, in the system, except for uh, the relay. And uh, I changed the small relays to um, three times the power. They're supposed to be able to break 30 amps of alternating current. Um, and the first relays I used uh, could break, uh, I think, 10 uh, amps of uh, alternating current, current. But this is a direct current system, so it's a totally different thing. Uh, so you're not supposed to break uh, any current at all, almost. But I think they will have a much um, better resistance for accidental um, action of the reverse switch than the first relays that I used in, the, in this uh, vehicle. 
So now I'm just waiting for that day when uh, the temperature is uh, high enough, say at least 10 degrees centigrade uh, or so, so that I would dare to um, uh, fly the multirotor because I have never flown it in like zero degrees. Uh, I don't want to, I don't know how long the batteries uh, will last in those uh, conditions and I really uh, don't have the time to do all the experiments to find that out. So I'm waiting for a little bit better weather. Uh, so it might take all uh, all the way until spring, but uh, if, it, if it happens, it happens. And then now I have the, uh, the transportation device for uh, taking, taking me to that location. And in the meantime, I will continue with the inflatable car project, which is an excellent winter project uh, because, well, you know, uh, two meter diameter wheels will probably uh, take me to a lot of fun places in, uh, in uh, snowy conditions, I think. So, <laughs> see you later.